Jesus, what a friend for sinners, Jesus, lover of my soul. Welcome to the Unknown Bible, the broadcast ministry of Bible Believers Baptist Church in Corpus Christi, Texas. Join us now for today's Bible study with our pastor, Bevins Welder. Have you ever thought about what happens to babies or little children if they die before they're old enough to be saved? You know, the answer to that question is found in the Bible, but a lot of times when people have this discussion, they don't know where to find the answer. And so I'm hoping today to be able to show you the scriptures that answer this question for you, because it's very important. Uh, it's, it's terribly sad to lose a loved one. Uh, when you're a child and you lose a parent, and I mean, even if you're, uh, you know, in your 40s or 50s and, or 60s and you lose your parent, sad, very sad. Uh, it's, it's, it's even sadder, I believe, to lose a sibling uh, or a spouse, even worse, and, and then even more tragic to lose a child. And that's just out of order. But when you, when you have a child who is an infant or a young child and they pass away, just crushing, crushing, crushing on the family and compound that with the question of where is my child uh, is really tough because then, then there's just seemingly no way to find peace. Well, today we hope to be able to show you from the scriptures uh, what the Bible says about children if they die before they're old enough to be saved. And let me just summarize the whole uh, broadcast by saying this. They go to heaven. They go to heaven. You see, many people have grown up in churches that baptize babies. I grew up in a church that baptizes babies. And the reason for that baptism was to convert them to Christianity or make them safe or get them dedicated to the Lord somehow. And, and then people honestly have the idea that because of that baptism, they sort of secure this child's position in heaven. I mean, they're fearful that if they don't baptize their own baby, somehow their children won't end up in heaven if they die young. But that's not Bible. Uh, that's religion. According to the Bible, though, that, that, that process of infant baptism, it's not biblical and it's not true. You see, little children are what we call safe. Not saved, but safe until they come to the knowledge of sin and have an understanding of salvation by grace through faith in Jesus Christ. I mean, as long as God does not charge a child with his sins, he's safe. He's safe from hell. Now, some people believe that a child reaches the understanding of salvation and the knowledge of sin at 12 years old. I don't know if you've ever heard that before, but they call this age, 12 years old, the age of accountability. And I believe they've gotten that age from Jesus Christ when he was uh, left behind after the feast and his uh, Mary and Joseph came back and found him there speaking with uh, the, the doctors and those that were familiar with the law and asking them questions and so forth. Well, that age is called the age of accountability. However, according to the Bible, there is no set age of accountability when a child is no longer safe. I mean, each child becomes accountable for his sins when he realizes that he has sinned against God and that the consequences of those sins uh, will wind him up in hell if he dies without Christ. And for many children, this age is much earlier than 12 years old. 
Now, you may be asking yourself the question, where, where are the verses that say this, that say what we're talking about? And that's really a good question. So let's take a look. Uh, first of all, God will not hold a child responsible for breaking the law if he doesn't even know what the law is. Turn in your Bible to Romans chapter 5. All right, Romans chapter 5. We're going to look at verse 13. And listen very carefully what the Bible says. Romans chapter 5 and verse 13. For until the law, sin was in the world. Here it is. But sin is not imputed where there is no law. Now, to impute sin means to charge the sin to him or to charge it to his account or to hold him responsible for his sin. Well, the Bible says, but sin is not imputed where there is no law. Now, we know that the law is here because we have it. It's written for us in the Bible. But a child has no knowledge of that law, and therefore it's not a sin is not imputed to him for breaking the law. Uh, let me just give you a, a, a very simple illustration, and I realize it's trite compared to the weight of the law, but listen. Have you ever seen a policeman ticket a little child on a tricycle for running a stop sign? No, he may warn the child not to be out in the street. Of course, if the parents are there and so forth, you know, uh, the parents are walking, the child is on the tricycle and runs through that stop sign on a tricycle. It is a, a vehicle. It needs to stop at the stop sign, but the policeman won't stop him for that and ticket him because, listen, he's too young to know that he is supposed to stop at that stop sign. Uh, another good verse on imputing sin or not imputing sin uh, where there is no law is Romans chapter 4. We were in Romans chapter 5 and verse 13. Now let's turn to Romans chapter 4 and look at verse 15. The Bible says, Because the law worketh wrath, for where no law is, there is no transgression. Where no law is, there is no transgression. All right. Effectively then, effectively, practically speaking, for a child, there is no law. Uh, and therefore, for a child, there's no transgression. And there continues to be no transgression for the child until, and here's the key word, he has knowledge of good and evil. You see, both of Romans chapter 4, verse 15, and Romans chapter uh, 5, verse 13, both speak about where there's no law. Well, we know that there is a law, but the child doesn't have knowledge of the law. Look, look in Deuteronomy chapter 1. This is a really, really good and beneficial verse of Scripture for this topic that we're talking about. And the topic is, what happens to babies, little children, if they die before they're old enough to be saved? And the answer to that question is they go to heaven. And the first reason is that sin is not charged to them or imputed to them because they don't have knowledge of the law. Look with me in Deuteronomy chapter 1. And in Deuteronomy chapter 1, uh, in verse 39, here's what, you, here's what you read. Moreover, your little ones which you said should be a prey, and your children, which in that day had no knowledge between good and evil, they shall go in thither, and unto them will I give it, and they shall possess it. Now you say, what, do they what are you talking about here? Well, let me give you the context so you understand what the verse is addressing, and then we'll go back and see the point that it's making on the subject about which we're talking. In Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 39, you know, J Joshua... And Caleb were the two spies who went in with the other ten and came out and said, We can take that land. The other ten persuaded all the people to run from it because they were afraid. Well, what God did to Israel is that he said, Everybody that's 20 years old and older is going to die in this wilderness as you wander around in here for 40 years. 
And after all of those guys are dead, then all those young ones that are under 20 years old will go into the promised land. Those who live through the wilderness journey will go into the promised land. All right. The adults, those that were over 20 years old, were concerned about their children being a prey when all the older ones died off. Said, who's going to take care of them? And, here, and here's what Moses says. Moreover, your little ones, which you said should be a prey, and your children, which in that day had no knowledge between good and evil, they shall go in thither. And unto them will I give it, and they shall possess it. So the Lord said, don't worry about them. I'll make sure that they grow up, and I'll get them in that promised land. Now watch, watch. Pertaining to the subject, what happens to babies or little children if they die before they're old enough to be saved? Look what the Bible says in verse 39 of Deuteronomy chapter 1. Children, which in that day, watch it, had no knowledge between good and evil good and evil. You see, there's a time in a child's life, uh, like Isaiah 7, 16 says, before the child shall know to refuse the evil and choose the good. That was Isaiah 7, 16. <laughs> there's a time in a child's life before the child knows to refuse the evil and choose the good. And it's during this time that the child is safe from punishment for sins uh, because he didn't know that he was committing a sin. I mean, let me put it this way. He, he may know, or in some cases certainly knows, the difference between right and wrong, but that's not the same thing as knowing the difference between good and evil, you see. Uh, if, if you pretty early can tell a child, don't do this, and if they do it, they know they're disobeying you. They know it's not right. They know it's wrong. But they don't understand the difference between good and evil and that what they're doing is a sin chargeable to them that will wind them up in hell without Christ if they continue. Now, they're going to learn that at some point, but not at that age. And God doesn't charge sin to a child who doesn't know the difference between good and evil. So... What happens to babies if they die before they're old enough to be saved? Or little children if they die before they're old enough to be saved? They go to heaven. Why? First of all, because sin is not imputed to them. They're, it's not charged to them. Okay? Um, and, and, and it won't be until they're old enough to know that what they're doing is a sin against God and has consequences, that they are, that they are choosing evil and refusing good. All right, now here's the second thing. God will take a child to heaven if he dies before his sins are imputed to him. And you know that because of Luke chapter 18, verses 15 through 16. Luke chapter 18, verses 15 through 16. All right, the Bible says this. They brought unto him. So this is people. Jesus is out ministering. There are people out there. And they're bringing, they're going to bring some children to him. They brought unto him also infants. And he, that's Jesus, would touch them, that he would touch them. But when his disciples saw it, they rebuked them. But Jesus called them unto him and said, Suffer little children to come unto me and forbid them not. Watch it. For of such is the kingdom of God. Now he goes ahead and makes an application. Verily I say unto you, whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child shall in no wise enter therein. And a certain ruler asked him, saying, Good master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And he goes right on into another discourse. So this is all that he says. What does he say? Suffer little children to come unto me and forbid them not. For of such is the kingdom of God. So when, when people brought these infants, and you know what an infant is in verse 15, that's a, real, that's a little child, a, a baby. Uh, Jesus Christ let you know, little children, little children, the kingdom of God is made up of little children. 
infants that have died are in heaven. They're in the kingdom of God. And you say, but how do you know that? Because Jesus Christ said so. S Suffer little children to come unto me and forbid them not. For of such is the kingdom of God. Now, when you check this cross-reference in Mark chapter 10, verses 13 to 16, you, you find an interesting thing. Because in Mark chapter 10, verses 13 to 16, uh, Mark describes that the ch these little children were not just infants, but some of them were actually young children. Mark chapter 10, verse 13, they brought young children to him. So infants and young children were there that he should touch them. And his disciples rebuked those that brought them. But when Jesus saw them, he was much displeased and said unto them, Suffer the little children to come unto me and forbid them not, for of such is the kingdom of God. Verily I say unto you, Whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child, he shall not enter therein. And he took them up in his arms, put his hands upon them, and blessed them. So infants and young children who do not have the knowledge of good and evil, who do not have the knowledge of the law, are safe. And therefore, they go to heaven when they die. And this, now, let me tell you something. This ought to be a great comfort to you. If you've ever had to bury a child before he or she was old enough to be saved, it ought to also be a comfort to you that perhaps you know a friend or have a relative who has likewise lost a child, and you can say, hey, you know what? It's okay that the child was not baptized as an infant because the Bible shows us sin is not imputed uh, to, a, to a child like that because he doesn't have knowledge of the law. And Jesus Christ said, uh, little children make up the kingdom of God, for of such is the kingdom of God. Now, what should you do if you aren't sure whether your child has reached an age at which God will impute his sins or her sins to them, what, what should you do? You're not sure. In other words, they're kind of at that age. They're talking about salvation and you're like, I don't know. <laughs> what do I do here? You know, they're three years old. Do we pray for Jesus to save us or do I wait till they're 12 or what do I do? Well, first thing to do is pray for them. Pray, pray for your children. First Samuel chapter one. And I, I'm going to read the verse, and the context of the verse is a little different than the application. But listen, First, Cham First Samuel chapter one, verse twenty-seven. Hannah says, "For this child I prayed, and the Lord hath given me my petition which I asked of Him." Now she was praying to be able to conceive and have the child, and the Lord gave her conception, and Samuel was born. But I love the wording of the verse, and I would say, let's make application. For this child I prayed, and the Lord hath given me my petition, which I ask of him. So pray for your children. And here's something that's very important. Take your children to church where they can hear the Bible taught and preached. Don't, you know, don't go to church just to fulfill a Sunday obligation. Go somewhere where the children's ministries teach and, uh, teach and preach the Bible so that your children can begin to learn what the Bible says what the Bible says. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 21. For after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God, it pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. Children are perfect for Sunday school and junior church. They're going to read and hear a lot of Bible. They're going to learn about the major <clears throat> stories like Noah and the flood, and Daniel, and the lion's den, and David, and Goliath, and the crucifixion of the Lord Jesus Christ, and all those great doctrines, and Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and all that stuff. They need to know. But they're also going to hear very, very simple gospel messages, which God will use to waken their hearts to their need of Jesus Christ. I'll tell you something else to do. Pray for them. Take them to church where they can hear the Bible taught and preached, and then teach them Bible at home. Uh, in Second Timothy, in Second Timothy, chapter one, uh, verse five, you know Paul compliments the faith that is in Timothy, and he says, "I know where you got this. You got this from your grandmother, and you got this from your mother." 
When I call to remember, 2 Timothy 1, 5, when I call to remember the unfeigned faith that is in thee, which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois and thy mother Eunice, and I am persuaded that in thee also. So, boy, I mean, you get that Bible going at home, it's going to really help your children. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 15. 2 Timothy chapter 3. And verse 15, the Bible says, And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. You know what Paul said? From a child you've known the holy scriptures. Children have very receptive hearts. They have very, very, um, you know, f minds that are, or that are, that are, they're not gullible by any stretch of the imagination when it comes to faith in the words of God. It's just that they don't have the struggles with believing. They see it in the word of God. They understand the word of God to be authoritative. And they say, you know what? That's what the Bible says. They're, they're, they're quick to believe it. And, and they can memorize it. So pray for your children. Take them to church where they can hear the Bible taught and preached. Teach them Bible at home. And then, and then the fourth thing, watch for your children to become very concerned for their own soul's safety. What am I saying? You watch your children, and if you start taking them to church, I'm telling you by the time they're four or five years old, they're already starting to talk about wanting to be saved, wanting to be baptized. And really and truly, because their minds are so receptive and they can grasp these things because God is you know, revealing things to them, uh, that they may not be ready to be saved at that time, uh, when they really become concerned for their own soul safety, though, you know that that I say the Lord has turned the heat up and they're really getting concerned about the need of receiving Jesus Christ as their savior. Uh, you see, Hebrews chapter two, verse three says, how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? And there t there comes a time when children become very urgent about their own soul salvation. Um, Hebrews chapter nine Verse 27 says, As it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment. And children start getting scared about facing the Lord at the judgment. They hear about hell and they know that it's real. And they, they know about the lake of fire. Whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. And children get so, so concerned about that. So, so watch for their urgency for their desire for their concern for their own sa soul safety now, that's the best thing to do as you watch children go from infancy to young children and then start growing up and you're like oh, i just don't know when my child is ready to be saved pray for them take them to church teach them the bible at home watch for their urgency now whatever you do whatever you do don't rush the holy spirit i mean it seems to me that children need plenty of time to really get it. I mean, to really begin to understand how the Bible applies to them. Listen, I know of people that were saved when they were five years old. Uh, they can tell you today in their older age, they know precisely when they were saved at five years old. They know they were under the conviction of sin. They knew they were on their way to hell if they didn't receive Jesus Christ as their Savior. They got saved, and I mean, they got transformed. And they got it. But a lot of times, children at that age are just, they don't get it. I mean, they can repeat it to you. They know that there's a hell. They know there's a Jesus Christ. They know there's salvation. Then They know that he shed his blood. They know there's sin. But it's just not quite there yet. Um, and so what you want to do is you want to keep watching them. Because it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to take them longer to realize that salvation is for them personally. Uh, it's going to take them longer to realize that than it is to know what salvation is. They'll come back from Sunday school or church. They tell you salvation. Jesus died for my sins on the cross. And if I receive him as my savior, I'll go to heaven and I won't have to go to hell. They can tell you that pretty early, but they may not get that. That was just for them personally. When they figure out that uh, salvation is for them personally, <laughs> they'll nearly knock you down to get to Jesus Christ. And that's a good time to lead your child to the Lord. I remember an incident, uh, incident that happened many years, ago, uh, many years ago. There was a young lady, and she was coming to church with her parents, coming to Sunday school, coming to junior church. And I mean, she was riding home with her parents. They had a pretty good drive each time they came to church. 
telling them how much she wanted to get saved. So they came with her to the church, and we talked a little bit. And as best as we could tell, she un she she knew these things from the Bible and from the teaching she was getting, but they weren't quite real to her yet. In other words, she didn't really understand how these matters of salvation applied to her. One day, her parents came to church and they said, well, let me tell you what happened last night. So our daughter came out of her room just in tears, jumped up in our bed and, and started telling us about the fact that she wanted to get saved. And we said, well, maybe you need to be just a little bit earlier. And they said she started crying and said, I do not want to put this off any longer. I know now that without Jesus Christ, I'm going to die and go to hell. And I do not want to go there. I want to get saved. So they said we prayed with her and she received the Lord Jesus Christ as her savior. Well, I know her. <laughs> She's an adult now. And she saved, and she can go back to that day, and she can remember vividly her, her salvation. And so you never want them to forget that. So I know it can be a little, bit, a little bit trying on you for just a short period of time, but don't rush the Holy Spirit. Let the Holy Spirit clearly, clearly, clearly reveal uh, your children's need for Jesus Christ to them, and then you be there with them. Uh, when they get ready to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior. And in the meantime, in the meantime, until they're ready to be saved, don't worry about them. Babies, infants, little children are safe because they have no knowledge of sin. Therefore, God's not going to impute sin to them. And while they're a child, Jesus Christ said, Suffer little children to come unto me and forbid them not, for of such is the kingdom of God. Start training them. Start getting them in that Bible. You be there for them continuously in their, spirit, in their spiritual understanding, in their spiritual grasp of the Scriptures. And all of this will get a lot clearer for you. But don't worry. Don't worry about these infant baptisms. Nothing in the Bible about that. And no necessity for that infant baptism at all. Jesus Christ has already provided for their safety until they're old enough to be saved. I, I pray this has been a help to you. And a comfort to you as well. Amen. You have been listening to The Unknown Bible, the radio ministry of Bible Believers Baptist Church in Corpus Christi, Texas. For information about our church, go to our church website at www.my3bc.com. That's my, the number three, bc.com. If you would like to contact us by telephone, our number is 361-241. 6100. Bible Believers Baptist Church is a Bible-believing church located at 1701 Rand Morgan Road. If you are not currently a member of a Bible-believing church and you are looking for a church with an uncompromising stand on the words of God, come visit with us this Sunday or Wednesday. We would love to see you. Oh!